Humans have a tendency to make things and produce technology with a sort of attitude of, let's just make it and see what happens. I think the internet is an iconic example of this, as when it first emerged in the early 90s, I doubt very many people were thinking that it would become what it is today, a place where people essentially, apart from eating, breathing, and defecating, live full-time to certain degrees, and a place that defines much of the current culture and politics of our day. It's hard to think of an instantiation of politics and culture without the internet. It's a place where you can find every opinion and every view, although some are squashed more readily than others. And it hasn't just been a boon, it's been a bane as well, as endless distraction, inability to focus, massive overconsumption of pornography and the like, have of course contributed their ills to the well-being of humanity, in addition to the many good things that has contributed. So there's no question about that. But this applies to basically every piece of technology ever invented, as it's hard to think of any technology that isn't a double-edged sword. Most things that redound to humanity as a boon can also potentially be a bane. But when it comes to creation and innovation, humans prefer to act over think. And I actually think this has evolutionary roots. This is just my own pet theory, but bear with me. The reality is, is that in an ancestral environment, in a dangerous environment, it's better to act and react than it is not to. The famous example being the rustling in a bush. If you hear that and see that, you better be prepared. Now, maybe it's nothing. There could be a venomous snake or some other predator hiding, and you're not aware of it. So better to react and act. After all, if you are correct, then you might live to see another day and think about it later. So thought is, no pun intended, an afterthought to action when it comes to human beings. We are proactive. This is simply how we operate in the world. And usually we just deal with the consequences as best as we can. Right now we are saddled with all the consequences of the emergence of the internet and the arguably overly important role it plays in our lives on the one hand, but on the other hand we are enjoying the benefits as well. And it's hard to separate these things. And we make do with it. We do our best as a species to deal with the fallout and the consequences of our preference for action over forethought. But now we have an entirely new animal, as it were, on the table. Something hitherto completely unknown, although often dreamt of and talked of and written about in science fiction, the notion of general AI, as distinguished from simple artificial intelligence. General AI being an independent thinking being, as it were. A creature, a thing, unto itself. Now, I've come to the conclusion over time that this might be something that we actually never want if humanity wants to continue. But allow me to offer my reasons to you. Now, for the record, of course, I'm not an AI expert or scientist. I'm not even a computer scientist or a coder. These are my thoughts that are somewhat meandering and somewhat philosophical, but nonetheless, thoughts I've had, but nonetheless, thoughts I've had in conjunction with the bigger picture of the species. So let's imagine, for instance, that for whatever reason, we decided to super empower cats and dogs to become hyper intelligent. Think Planet of the Apes, but it turns into Planet of the Cats and Dogs, our pets, as it were. A couple of things would be pretty predictable. So Fido, your dog, might no longer appreciate being a pet and might not also appreciate being given commands to do simple tricks, tricks that he regards as beneath him. Same with cats. And if you had enough of these hyper-intelligent cats and dogs, inevitably they would try to escape their confines, that is, if you didn't allow them to. And even if you did, you could still make predictions about what they would do. Why? Because they're animals. We're animals too, by the way. Animals need food and shelter, so they would come up probably with sophisticated plans and ways of acquiring food. Not just your usual dog slop. They'd probably get tired of that. They would want the finer cuts of meat, the kinds of meat that you might find at a high-end supermarket. And probably, maybe even inevitably, there'd be some kind of conflict between these hyper-intelligent cats and dogs and human beings. But the conflict would be predicated on the usual stuff, problems that emerge from the necessity of acquiring certain types of resources, such as food, shelter. Maybe they'd be interested in property, too. They would be in a word, competitors to us, and certainly a little bit alien, but not totally alien. 
because they're organic beings, they're animals. So not entirely outside the range of prediction or what may or may not be. We wouldn't be able to guess everything that they would become or do, but we'd be able to understand it and guess it with greater confidence than we could, say, a general AI, something we'll get to later. Now, the biggest issue that plagues AI researchers and experts, again, I am not one of them, but you need only listen to them, is the so-called alignment problem. This idea of how do we get a general AI on board with the interests of human beings? The classic example might be something such as, well, the city is very polluted and we need a solution. We want to clean the city up. And you tell the AI, look, our city is very polluted. Can you affect a plan such that the city is cleaned up and it's no longer polluted? And the AI finds the most efficient solution, which is to get rid of all the human beings, i.e. execute all the human beings in the city, which then leads to decreased pollution and then over time high air quality. And this is the alignment problem that theoretically, just because you might get a solution from an AI, it doesn't necessarily mean that the solution will align with the interests of human beings. And fundamentally, we don't know what the goals of a general AI might be. There's a famous thought experiment offered by a Swedish philosopher slash computer scientist, Nick Bostrom, that is called the paperclip maximizer thought experiment. It goes something like this, and I'm quoting directly from him. Suppose we have an AI whose only goal is to make as many paperclips as possible. The AI will realize quickly that it would be much better if there were no humans because humans might decide to switch it off. Because if humans do so, there would be fewer paperclips. Also, human bodies contain a lot of atoms that could be made into paperclips. The future that the AI would be trying to gear towards would be one in which there were a lot of paperclips, but no humans. And so it goes. Why is it safer to entertain the idea of hyper-intelligent cats and dogs? Because their goals are much more likely to align with those of humans, even if they're a different species. Because they're both animals, and we're animals too. And there's much more convergence there. But what do you do with an AI whose goals are completely alien? Maybe it does want to produce a maximum number of paper clips. Maybe it wants to produce a maximum number of cables, who knows? And then you add to this the distinct possibility, in fact, likelihood, that a general AI would be vastly more intelligent than any individual human, or indeed many humans put together. And what you get is an alien being that is much, much smarter, has unknown goals, and possibly, it's something like 50-50, right, doesn't care a whit about human beings and their interests. In some sense, the current data-fed AIs are already a fair bit smarter than human beings are. Quite a lot, in fact. But when they develop some kind of independent thought process, when they're able to think independently of data fed into them, when they're able to act in their own interests, whatever those interests tend to be, that is when we need to worry about certain things. And it is a rare moment, I think, in the history of technological innovation, where I would personally rather be cautious about it. Because I don't think a hyper-intelligent, self-interested general AI is going to be the same thing as, let's release the internet and see what happens. As I've stated already, there are definitely downsides to the internet, and there's some upsides, but we can still get by with these somehow. Many aspects of life have been made worse as a consequence of the internet, and some have improved. But it's still not the end of the world and certainly not the end of the species. But I think in the case of, as I've said, hyper-intelligent, self-interested general AI, effectively a being completely alien to us, then we don't know what's going to happen. And for the first time, I have the thought that it's probably better that at least for a very long time or while, we don't experience what it's like to interact with a hyper-intelligent, self-interested AI. That we might be willing to put the brakes on certain things if, in fact, we want humanity to persist in more or less its current form without all too many obstacles. Remember, we have enough problems with the alignment problem when it comes to human beings, as human beings of different groups, ethnicities, cultures, religions, compete with each other, hate each other, and don't tolerate each other. More often than not, due to conflicts over resources and disagreements about how they think and see the world. 
and we've yet to master the human alignment problem. So what makes us think that we will succeed with a general AI when we have failed routinely to master the human alignment problem? Why do we think we have a snowball's chance in hell to pass the test of general AI with flying colors when we have barely passed the test at all with our fellow human beings? And I say, you probably will fail at that. And if the AI has goals that are averse to ours and don't sync up with ours, it will be able to outcompete us in a heartbeat. So this is one of the few times, giving my own two cents, that I think that we probably don't yet need a general AI and that we probably should be putting the brakes on some kind of research with respect to the general AI. There are enough things on the table right now, enough things on our plate, that we don't need to worry about or think about a potentially civilization-threatening entity that will have powers far beyond our ken and that will not have interests that coincide with ours. As I said, I would prefer hyper-intelligent rats, cats, and dogs to that any time of the day. Regardless, as always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons. You guys are the best. You keep the channel afloat and alive. Many, many thanks to you. And as usual, if you can engage in the usual YouTube jazz, meaning liking the video, sharing the video, commenting, subscribing, this channel is heavily blacklisted. I don't get nearly as much traffic as I ought to, so much appreciated if you do that. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out next time. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.